Hello, hello everyone. It is 10.01 p.m. Central Time on Friday, July 15th, 2016, and I want to welcome everybody into the Earthquake 3D live stream, where we go over the earthquakes which struck over the past 24 hours since my update last night at 10 p.m., and we also watch for new areas to see new earthquake activity develop out. And tonight's update might be one of the shortest updates I've had to do so far since starting the live stream. Many people contacting me today asking me if the USGS had turned off their feeds, and uh, the answer is no, the USGS did not turn off their feeds, but I can see why people were asking. I'm going to turn on the magnitude 2.5 plus feed, the one that everybody normally sees in most of their apps, and we'll look just over the past 24 hours, and you're only going to see three different 2.7 earthquakes which struck in the United States, one 2.5 in Hawaii, a little bit of activity up in Alaska, and a few fives striking around the planet. But this is a dramatic silencing off over the past 24 hours compared to where we were yesterday. The only thing new that stands out to me as different is the new activity south of the Indian Ridge and this is west of Australia, and this is the Indo-Australian plate where we saw an 8.0 earthquake strike back in 2012. So it's a dramatic silencing off, like I said, but let's go back and look at the last 24 hours of earthquakes. This is going to be for my U.S. viewers, and we'll take this down literally for 24 hours since my update last night. You can see the swarm locations that we were talking about last night in California still are being perturbed slightly, but every location that was ramping up in activity actually started to go down. And this is interesting to see. that We don't normally see this rapid of a silencing off. As a matter of fact, in the past several years, maybe five to six years, I've only seen it get silent like this maybe two or three times. And every single time we see a silence, silence event a dramatic silencing off around the entire planet, it's immediately followed by a larger earthquake within a few days' time. And it's held true every single time that I've seen this happen, so to see it happen again now lets us know that something is building, and it's building in the Pacific, no doubt about it. Now, here in California, we can show the areas. I, I'm not going to bother looking up these locations. We did this last night, and for many of the viewers who were here last night, you guys saw the volcanoes, but then my feed cut out halfway through and people couldn't see what I was showing. So every time I start to show these areas, it seems like there's some kind of technical error when I'm getting close to one of the military operations, or in this case, it was Vandenberg Air Force Base down in Southern California. Now, I would like to point out that we're seeing earthquakes break out east of the California border, again at the nuclear operation near Parump, or Parump, somebody tried to correct me on the way it was spelled, the way it's said, but a new swarm near Parump. Furthermore, the swarm in Southern California carries on near Salton Sea, and I think we're going to expect to see this carry on for several more weeks, if not months, to come. It's already been one month. The swarm around Southern California and Salton Sea has spread out, it's grown up in size magnitude-wise, gone down in size magnitude-wise, and then gone up. And now it seems to have leveled out at that 1.0 range and about maybe 20 or 30 earthquakes throughout a day's time. Now that's a uh, slight silencing off. We saw several thousand develop over the course of a few days to a week's time. So that's, you know, lowering in pressure, just like all the other areas that I'm talking about here. But the lowering in pressure is going to give way to the silent zones. And the silent zones are the spots we're watching for larger activity to strike. What magnitudes are we watching for? Let's go ahead and show you why we're watching for the magnitudes as well as what, ma what magnitudes. We're looking for 5.0 earthquake activity to strike in the middle of the silent zone between Vancouver Island and Alaska. We've got to watch for this to happen over the next few days, even though that the whole plate has gone silent all the way over to West Pacific and Southeast Pacific. So I don't have anything to base this on other than the nearby movement on either side for the next day to determine a silent area in the United States. 
So all we have to go on are swarms of zeros and ones to the south and a swarm of zeros to the north. This means that most likely we will not see much eastward pressure transfer until the earthquakes occur off the coast. So like I said, tonight's update is going to be really short because we haven't seen anything develop since last night. And as I said last night, may take one to two days for this to, to develop. So it's looking like this weekend is going to be a fairly busy weekend, most likely starting tomorrow and going into tomorrow night. We should see a resume increase in activity and it may kick off with a single larger earthquake in our silent zone, the silent zone that we were watching to the north to compensate for all the movement that struck to the south over the past several days. Let's show that to you one more time. Because I showed it last night, we will show it again, and we will turn this up just for the larger earthquakes. I want you guys on the west coast to understand what to look for and why we're looking for it. And so when we look at the fives that struck, you'll still see several on the map here now. And let me get the 4.9s off there. Southern Hemisphere, extending west of Australia, going north through Japan and Kuril Islands, and then our quiet zone, silent zone from Alaska, south across the west coast of the United States, and Central America. This means the middle of the silent zone should be struck. That's the most uh, likely area to be struck. We usually see that the pressure builds in the middle of the fulcrum point and releases with a single larger earthquake. We hope for swarms. You hope for lesser earthquakes and a bunch of them, as opposed to a single larger earthquake. So if we do see fives, only fives, develop out down the coast, we'll be lucky. But we're watching for two things to happen very close to the west coast of the United States right now. We're watching for the fives to carry on, up, over, and around to complete the circle all the way around the Pacific. And we're also looking for a single larger earthquake to compensate for all the movement to the south, west, and southeast. And the two areas are somewhat overlapping. So will we first see a large earthquake followed by movement down the coast in the 5.0 range? It could be. Or we might first see the 5.0 range earthquake strike off the coast, then see the larger earthquake to the north. But regardless of which way it happens, we have to watch over the next few days for this to occur off the west coast of the U.S. going into the Pacific Northwest up towards Alaska. And if that was the only spot to watch, we'd be lucky. But we do have other spots on the planet where we're going to see additional larger movement develop in the next day to two days at the most. We have our deep earthquake that happened below Bolivia in South America. We should see a shallow, larger earthquake, one to two magnitudes larger than the 5.1. One magnitude larger takes us up to 6.1. Two magnitudes larger takes us up to 7.1. And it will be in a nearby silent zone. So there's only a few nearby silent zones to this movement. And look what just happened to the north over the past 24 hours. Remember how I talked about the 6.0 relieving the pressure for the large activity and we would expect the larger activity to strike to the south? Well, we saw a series of fours break out here, but nothing large. Proof again that the six did release the pressure and it's spreading out to adjacent areas. And the adjacent areas that are being hit are the nearby silent zones, which are in Peru where these white earthquakes are the most recent earthquakes. South, the 4.4, that's in Peru. North, 4.7, that's in Colombia. And then we have the 4.4 here right at the coast of Ecuador. Well, that follows the 6.5 in Ecuador, and it's spreading out. It's obvious it's spreading out across the area and down to the south. So we have to watch further to the south, most likely, for our larger movement to strike. Overall, here in the West Pacific, we really would expect to see more activity than this over the past 24 hours. Really, take a look at it, guys. You would expect to see more than this in the West Pacific over 24. So what's going on? Why has it gotten quiet? Well, in some cases, the silent zones are the signs of a coming larger seismic event. Sometimes around volcanoes, you'll see a silencing off, but a quiet before the storm. And... That's what's occurring right now, in my opinion. There's no way you're going to go from all that activity to nothing in a day's time, which means that there's something else at play. Either something is happening down below, far down below, or we're seeing a buildup to a single larger event soon. So if something's happening down below that's causing the pressure to cease, then it would be robbing the pressure from the surface which means we'd see a collapsing of some kind happening inside the planet. 
But that would even cause earthquake activity, deep earthquake activity. So I, I don't want to say there's some kind of collapsing happening, but I'm just saying that something would be robbing that pressure right now, or it's parking and building for a single larger release. So we have to keep watch over the next few days, just in case. Now, the other thing that happened today, the European feed went down from the EMSC. So the, Euro, the USGS, it looked like they didn't report any earthquakes. And then the European agency, their feed went down. I had to go dig it back up and pull it back up on the computer and everything. I mean, it was a big deal that this feed went down for me because I've never seen it go down. But if we look at the European earthquakes, you're going to make out that Turkey has been struck over and over again over the last several weeks, and now Turkey in full swarm again. And that's really weird in light of what's going on in Turkey, right? And it was the border regions on each side of Turkey that kept getting struck for the last several weeks. Now Turkey in full military lockdown. In addition to that, a new deeper earthquake struck down below Sicily, right at the south boot tip of Italy, and then check it out right here in the middle of Switzerland, a borderline 3.0 earthquake and 2.3, 2.8 and 2.3 started out as a 3.0. So what does that mean? Well, we were talking about Switzerland and North Italy. We were talking, here's the North Italy border, here's Switzerland. So it's so close. And we were talking about new larger movement to strike in the area. And we talked about CERN. Well, apparently, according to Greg Hanford, CERN had some kind of particle escape that happened or some kind of power failure that allowed for some of these energy deposits that are stored inside. And I call them deposits because they really are stores of energy. These, uh, the klystrons or, or the magnet, magnetron, I, it could be a magnetron, a waveguide. A giant waveguide. If you guys understand microwaves and how they use magnets to control radio waves, then you could understand CERN. They have a giant version of this. Well, if one magnet in there fails, it's going to allow some of that to escape. And this is just a report that came in that there was some kind of escape that happened today. Well, check it out. Now 3.0 earthquake striking in Switzerland. <laughs> it went up from zeros and ones to threes, zap, as they drop all that energy to ground. Finally, we see the earthquake out here at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's another earthquake because if we actually take a look, you may remember last night I talked about a, a 5.1 that struck out there, right? Or 5.2. There's the 5.2 that we talked about yesterday. Now look at it. 5.1 striking due south. So that's two fives striking out at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge over the last seven days. So what does that mean? Well, it's the final stop off point for the pressure that came over from Europe over the past several days. So you see all the fours, all these fours adding up to two single fives or the leftovers adding up to two single fives shallow striking out here at the mid Atlantic Ridge. So there's the update. Not much happened. Really, I could get through this in how long I've been only been talking 14 minutes. We don't even have to look up the earthquakes on the West Coast because look over 2.5 guys. Look what struck over 2.5. Next to nothing. But maybe if we want to extend the video out for a few more minutes, my West Coast viewers might appreciate me going to look this up. These two earthquakes here in California, maybe just to go see what's there. What do you guys think? We should go look it up? I think we should probably do that. All right. Well, the way we do this, real easy. We pull the coordinates from the USGS. And uh, you get them at the top of their page. The see this coordinate set right here, and we copy, put it in on our copy of Google Earth. You guys can get a copy of Google Earth for free, by the way. It's from Earth.Google.com. No www, just Earth.Google.com, and you can download that, and you'll get what I'm using here on the screen now. Now check it out. I showed this last night, and that's when my screen went dead. We were looking at Vandenberg Air Force Base, you guys remember? All right, well now I can show you directly on the screen the spot that you missed or that wasn't seen before. Here are our offshore drilling platforms, gas extraction and oil extraction platforms, fracking, fracking going on here. Yes, they are doing fracking, injection. And there's our offshore platforms. And then we have earthquake striking nearby here. That's our location with the 2.7. Now to the east, we have another 2.7, similar magnitude and similar depth, by the way. Take a look at that. 
8.3 kilometers on that earthquake and 5.3 kilometers on this earthquake within 3 km of each other down below. Well, what's there? Let's go put the coordinates in. Take a look. It says inland. So it's not out to sea. Well, maybe we'll have something actually physically there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look at this nice pumping out. Oh, we've got a wind farm. And... Looks like we've got very large wind farm. Usually there's pumping operations mixed in with the wind farms. Uh, oh yeah, a large quarry. Several large quarries there. But a huge, huge wind farm. Is there anything else of any consequence near the location? Down to the south, you have more. Well, striking due east. What is this place mark here? Bison Peak. Doesn't look like anything else of any interest is nearby. We have a few volcanoes, but that's pretty far away. Let's get a line measurement tool on that. Is it close enough to be of any consequence? That's 14 miles. I mean, that's close, but not close enough, in my opinion, to be of any concern. And these are all wind farm. We wouldn't expect wind farms to cause any kind of earthquake, so their location there is just by coincidence. Uh, I'm not seeing any pumping operations here at all. That's lateral fault zone movement, then. That's what it would be. I mean, there's nothing else there. And it's right along the ridge. You can see where our fault zones exist. I've shown this before, but let me show it one more time. We actually have to turn it for you to see this triangular shape of a fault zone that goes into Southern California. So we got Los Angeles down here, okay, where it says Oxnard and Santa Barbara. But we turn this at an angle, and it's going to really bring out or define the fault zones. Then you'll see the fault zone that exists. Oh. I guess I have to turn off my place marks. You'll see the fault zone that exists all the way down to the south and to the north, almost in a pyramid type shape. Well, this is at the top of the eye of the pyramid, right on the edge. And that makes sense now when you take a look at it and you see the fault zone extends all the way down here. We have volcanoes on either side. And this really goes all the way down to the south. Pretty interesting, huh? Goes down here and then makes a bend to the south. So almost like a diamond shape, and it does the same on the east side. Comes down to here and makes a bend inwards. So we're like looking at a diamond type shape from the faults. And that's just looking at it sideways. There we go. So yeah, uh, there's your earthquake update, guys. So two points, oh, look at the 2.7s to the east. So the only earthquakes to strike in the continental United States of any noteworthy side, size are all 2.7s. We have one striking offshore near the gas oil platforms, another one striking at the fault zone, and then we have two 2.7s striking at the fracking pumping operations in the Midwest. And we've shown those so many times that only a new viewer wouldn't know what's there. And maybe I should just show it just to wrap up the video so we can drive home the point that these man-made operations can be a spot where it's, well, we see serious seismic release occur. And we'll zoom in on the area. This is Oklahoma. We'll turn on my place marks just to make those available. And when you start to look at the area, you're going to see a few place marks that I have from previous earthquakes that occurred. And just like a mile or two to the west, we have our fracking operations. And this is where they inject water down into the ground. It then fractures the shale. That releases gas. They collect the gas, siphon it off, sell it on the market. And there's just large pumping operations. Every one of these little white specks out here you'd think is a, um, a farm or something, but each one is a different pumping operation and pipeline pad. I mean, they got them all over. And uh, we can back it out and show you how many there are. I mean, there's so many, I don't have them marked. 
I only marked a few of them. And so our earthquake, again, striking right here at COIL, C-O-Y-L-E. And I'd be willing to bet there's some other nearby, ah, here's one right here, some other nearby wells that are either scraped and ready to go or have already been done and over with and capped off. But usually they keep them for several years just to pay for their cost. Here's another one right here. And another one looks like an older one there and an older one to the left, right across the river. There's got to be some right down here too that I'm just missing. That's an electrical substation. There we go. There's another one right there. All right, well, there you go. Those are frac operations and they cause earthquakes. Pressure comes up from down below on the plate and it presses up to the weakest spot. Here in the central portion of the plate, the weakest spot are the spots where we humans have drilled out several thousand wells and it causes fractures like drills in a tooth. Then if you put enough weak spots into any solid structure and you compress that structure, you'll receive fractures throughout that structure, starting at the weak spots or giving way at the weak spots. So the silent zones are our enemy right now. We do not like to see complete silence events going on around the Pacific. When I get viewers contacting me saying, hey, it looks like uh, the USGS turned off their site and I have to go check and I say, well, you know what? They didn't turn off their site, but there are no earthquakes being reported. I mean, there is the possibility of collusion that all the seismic authorities around the world are somehow puppeted and controlled and they're trying to keep it quiet. But I doubt that. I highly doubt that. The chances of that on such a small uh, size earthquake that we're expecting, I mean, we're expecting like in the 7.0 range. I hate to call that small, but, you know, in, in relation to a 9 or an 8, mid 8 or 9.0 earthquake, a 7 is, you know, moderate. It won't cause too much damage if it strikes out to sea. But, you know, so would they do a huge conspiracy to block a 7.0 warning or something? No, they, I, they would not do that. So it really means that things went silent for the day. And that, to me, is troubling, especially right now, right coming after the whole plate moving. Now, could it be that the whole plate moved on a 5.0 level and that's it? Maybe. It'd be the first time I've ever seen that happen. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but it would be the first time I've seen it happen in six years' time. So I'm leaning towards the other side of this, which is in the past when we've seen silent events, usually the next day, I'm pretty busy or within a few days' time. I'm like really busy. So I'm like, wow, it was just silent a day ago, guys. And now here we are. Look, a big earthquake struck. I've done that like three or four times in the past five or six years. So it just stands out to me. Be on watch just in case. Always have a plan. You know, I mean, look, you, you know the story. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know. But have a plan and be prepared just in case. You may never have to use it. But on the West Coast, it is prudent to dust off those plans. Look around your house, make appropriate measures to, you know, stop things from falling, stop things from obstructing your way out of the door if you need to get out of the house. Gas lines, have the wrench set by so you can turn it off. Make sure your friends, family, loved ones know how to get a hold of you. Maybe the email situation, make sure that you've got your email stuff all set up so that if you need to communicate with people, make sure it's set up on your phone. Make sure that you also have another way to use your email aside from your phone so that in case the systems are down, you can still send an email. So maybe an alternative battery for your laptop and uh, a way to connect into another network. Phone lines also. Think about that. The basics have to be met. So food, water, transportation, communications, and possibly self-defense for long-term survival. For short term, it's just knowing what to do to get in, a, in the actual event. Like in a storm, you know that when a tornado is coming or a severe winds are coming to take shelter in the lowest point of your house, be away from glass and possible flying objects. Well, the same would go for an earthquake. You need to know what's going to happen. You need to look around and see what's going to break, what's not. Is there going to be glass on the floor? Is there not? Will I, will I need water the next day if the water lines are broke? Let's say there is a moderately sized earthquake in California, and it does cause water main breakage. 
Well, right now it's summertime. And from the last time I checked, it was pretty hot in Southern California. Could you imagine with no air conditioning and no water? Water mains broke, shut off, no power to get it. Well, you might want to have a few stores of water. And you don't have to go crazy on it. But just think about what you would do for you and your, your family. Or if you have pets, think about your pets. But these are things you need to think about now when you got the time and you got a few extra bucks. And it can only be a few dollars difference between making it or breaking it. Take a look at what happened in Katrina. That was just with a storm and it was just three days. But in three days, complete societal meltdown, dead bodies covered in the street, people seeking shelter in the dome, looking for food and water. After three days' time, old people are starting to die already. Young people, I mean, it was hot and humid too. So that, and that was just for a you know, relatively normal hurricane event. It wasn't the craziest of all crazy hurricanes. It was just that nobody came in to help and all the people were expecting Big Brother to fly in and bring them all what they needed. It was, it was insane. It was like the people too dependent on Big Brother and Big Brother too inept to do anything. So the same goes for earthquakes. When you're cut off without power, when you're cut off without water, when you've got response, if it's just you, I get it, man. You're like, I can wing it. I'll be all good. But if it's your, you and your family or you and your pets, just take them into consideration. Have that plan dusted off. Make sure you know how to do it in case it goes down. And you may never have to use it. That's, you know, that's the thing with earthquakes. You may never have to use it. Could strike somewhere else, might not strike at all. But every time we see this kind of event happen, this silence event, we usually see it respond with earthquake activity. So keep watch. Have a plan. Be prepared. What time is it now? Let's see. There's let's see, 10, 28 p.m. It's not too late. If you guys want to share this right now and just get the word out, you can. We're not looking at too long of an update tonight, so you guys uh, at least can rewind it and watch it. Last night's update went into almost two hours. So, yeah. How many people are in here? 320? Awesome. Anybody who's new? We do this every night, so tonight's update's rather cursory. Compared to last night's update, which was extended. It's on my channel if you want to see last night's update. It still stands. I'm still looking for the next day and a half. But looks like there's a lot of people in here. Hope everybody's having a good weekend so far. It was a wild day. I could go into everything, but I won't bother you with that. If any large earthquakes strike over the next few hours, I'll be back in and I'll be watching throughout the night going into tomorrow. There is no doubt about it. Our silent zones are the spots we're watching. They still stand. Coast of Oregon, coast of the Pacific Northwest, going north of Vancouver, you are under the gun. Central America, South America, that's going to play into what strikes on the West Coast. We talked about that yesterday. So today, again, no new update on Central America. Still silent. Still seeing the silent zone along the West Coast and Alaska, meaning that the middle of the silent zone is still the spot we're watching, and we won't be watching anywhere else until we see that movement occur. It's go time, guys. It is go time. And the fact that it went silent is an even more sign to those of you who've been watching for the last several years. You know what I'm talking about. Anytime it gets quiet like this, man, oh man, we need to be on watch. Cheers, everybody. Friday night, try not to party too hard. And I'll be back in. We'll play some more music. And maybe I might even crack another brewski tonight. Who knows? Maybe I'll even turn on the camera. Hmm. Might turn on the 360 tonight. Get a shot in the office while we're drinking. Word up. Oh, and one other thing. I forgot to mention it last night, but the Dutch Squad Facebook group, a lot of many people now just now finding out, I guess there were several hundred members who, you know, not everybody's on during the week, but many people contacting me about the Dutch Squad and uh, it being sh shut off and they were wondering if it was coming back. I, I'm pretty sure it's been permanently deleted. That was their decision. Uh, some crap went down and people got hacked and all kinds of stuff uh, through Facebook. It was something happened and uh, the group got shut down. So I had no say in it. I didn't even know it happened until after the fact. But again, I didn't set up the group, so it's not my say. You know what I mean? Like I can't say one thing about it because it's not my group. I've got my pages. You guys are welcome to come to my pages, but you can't post there. So you have to either... You know, just read what I post or just read what other people are talking about because uh, no links allowed to be shared on my page for many reasons. 
All right, that's it. That's all I got now. So that is it. It's 10.31 p.m. Perfect. It was a 30-minute update. And now get ready for the Weather Channel.